Okay, so let's talk about Jalen Hurts for a second. I I think he's a really interesting player. I think the Eagles are in a very interesting situation. One thing I did was, if you watched my video work, I sort of said, when should you about when should you give up on a quarterback? I used the Pro Football Focus grades and several other stats, but Pro Football Focus grades were the ones that really I felt like did a, the best job of predicting uh, if you're going to be a bust, how good you're going to be. And that said, that if you got a Pro Football Focus grade of under 60, it means that you're probably going to end up being a bust. And Hertz's grade was 56.2 which means he just missed that cutoff, and really you want to get above 60. But, like I always say, you can't just look at one stat in a vacuum. You have to watch the film. You have to figure everything out for yourself. And so I wanted to go back, view it, and say, well, is that grade true? Is he going to be a bust? Or is there actually a lot more to it, and does he have superstar potential like I thought he did before the draft? So we're going to start off with this play because this play is a very important play to show, I think, a lot of what went wrong with the Philadelphia Eagles offense as a whole. So this is going to be a cover one play. Uh, maybe the best route that could work would be the halfback who's currently lined up with a linebacker, which by the way, sometimes people ask, how can you tell if it's man before the snap? If you ever see a linebacker move out uh, and currently playing on the side like that, it's man coverage. That's one of the key ways. Also, just if you see someone in motion, like a wide receiver in motion, and a cornerback follows them, it's probably man coverage. There's plenty of tells, but uh, anyways, back to this play. Watch what happens once it starts. Hertz takes the snap, and as you see, there is nothing open right here. So, I mean, you can sit here, and again, this is kind of the thing that really was plaguing the Eagles a lot this season. Not a lot of separation on most of these plays, especially against man coverage. They really struggled at getting open. And so for Hertz, he kind of has no choice but to just go with his, you know, first read and hope that this can work. That's what he does. He chucks it deep. And there actually was an opening, but he missed the throw. It wasn't a huge opening, but we have to be fair. There was a small opening. Hertz wasn't able to make that throw. So how much do we blame him for, or how much do we say, ah, that was a tough throw anyways? I think a little bit of both. Like, this one's another good example of kind of his team not doing well, and also maybe you could throw blame onto him as well. I'm sure you guys remember this play, or maybe not. It's been, been, been over a month now. I remembered it. It was a man coverage play. Again, cover one play over the middle of the field is going to be kind of clogged up, but towards the sidelines, that could be open. Ertz is probably the guy he wants to throw to here, running a slant route, which is good against this coverage. All of this makes sense. Looking there makes sense for Hertz. So Hertz takes the snap, and as you see, uh, Zach Ertz is fighting to get open right here. There was contact at the line. It's taking a bit longer than you would have expected. Also, the ball has already been thrown. So while Hertz, uh, while Zach Ertz, uh, the names are similar, so I'll use full names. While Zach Ertz is currently not even looking back at Jalen Hurts. Uh, it's it, it's just a difficult situation right here. Uh, Jalen Hurts is trying to make this throw quickly, and this to me is a definition of a rookie mistake and one I don't think he'll be making in the future, but it also kind of goes to show just the bad situation he's in where it's week 17. These defenses, they know exactly when they're going to switch off. They've communicated. They've worked together for an entire season, whereas Jalen Hurts hasn't worked with most of his teammates for most of the season. They're not on the same page, and he was playing at a massive disadvantage going into these games. Now, we'll bring up this play next because, uh, listen, uh, as much as I want to sit here and say all of his faults were because of the Eagles roster and things that weren't his fault, it's not exactly true. Uh, there definitely were some mistakes that he made as well. This one's going to be a man coverage play, and he has a pick play going to his right, which is really what he should do and what I would hope that he knows what he should do in this situation. It's third down and three right now, and this is a big play. I mean, it's the third quarter, down 10 to Dallas, and this game was one they had to win to hopefully, you know, if they ended up winning week 17, they would have made the playoffs if they also won this one. So it was a big game. And watch, once this play starts, that pick play to the right ended up working out perfectly. I mean, there's a receiver wide open. They can get the first down, and Jalen Hurts just isn't really looking there. Um, it, it, it's tough. It's tough. You know, because he looked, made the wrong read pre-snap. It is one that I would say is, you know, it's kind of a nitpicky pl play for me bringing up. But also it is one that, like, you know, Tom Brady makes that play. Is it unfair to compare him to Tom Brady? Yes, but at the same time, they're both in the same league. You're going to have to get that good eventually. Like, to even take it down a notch, you know, like a, a Dak Prescott makes that play. So, you know, 
quality quarterbacks do make this play, Hurts wasn't able to here. He eventually just has to scramble and finally just chuck the ball away. Now, he made some incredible throws, though, and that's why I kind of, am, I have the mindset of, don't give up on Hurts just yet. Yes, I know, there were, were some, a bit of tough moments, but for the most part, I think there was a lot better good than bad. I think he's earned another shot, and try to give him some receivers that can get open, because he didn't have that really much at all, and a lot of his plays was him making something happen out of nothing and playing hero ball, and honestly, you saw something very similar with Carson Wentz. So on this play, it's cover two zone, and really, this play is not supposed to work that well. Uh, you do have a receiver who's going to run deep and eventually cut towards the bottom of the uh, screen, which would be towards Hertz's left, and there's kind of a, a curl route that maybe the safety could come in on, but it's not really designed to work this way because the play isn't supposed to last that long. Watch, Hertz takes a snap, he's going to run a play action. There is immediate pressure right here on Hertz. So, well, yeah, the safety does kind of come in now. The safety to Hertz is left. Uh, he's going to run in and cover up the curl route a little bit, which now could allow someone else to get open. The issue with this kind of play, though, is just that, like, again, it takes so long for it to work. But watch Jalen Hurts get out of pressure, run up. He's going to end up throwing off balance and make this throw for a huge completion. That's something that Hurts was capable of. And honestly, that's a big reason why I think Hurts ended up being the better option over Wentz later in the season is because basically both of these guys just had to play hero ball and hope for the best. But, you know, Jalen Hurts was just better at it. And I think that the throwing ability was a little bit better from Hurts, just in terms of these makeshift plays. And the running ability was way better. Extending time and also being able to run for the for first downs and stuff. Maybe way better is the wrong word. But, you know, as good of an athlete as Wentz is, he just he would run into sacks, whereas uh, Hurts runs out of him. But one last play is this one, and that it's that this would create issues. And again, I want to show this play because it really goes to show just how horrible of a situation Jalen Hurts has been brought into here in Philadelphia. It's a zone coverage play. So that's uh, the defense they're going up against. And once this play starts, you know, again, uh, Hurts going to do a good job scrambling outside the pocket, extending time because nothing got open right away. Go figure. That's what happens with Philadelphia. And Maybe Hertz has a receiver open. Not really. This is an incredibly difficult throw to make. And I kind of think that this is kind of one of the problems that this team would really put their quarterbacks in is the quarterbacks kind of felt like they had to play a perfect game to win a football game. Hertz felt like he has to make this incredible throw. He doesn't think that three is enough points here. And in fairness, in this exact situation, it totally isn't. This is late. This is fourth quarter down 13 points. So uh, I totally understand why he, yeah, you know, interception's still not great. Not as big of a deal as it would be if this was the first quarter. But still, it kind of felt like a lot of times with Hertz and Wentz, they just were in kind of desperation mode the whole game. So Hertz takes a chance, it backfires, and it is, in fact, intercepted. So, you know, not great. I think you can criticize that. But I think really the more concerning thing is if you do want to go with Hertz as your quarterback, which I think they should, if that's what you want to do, you got to make sure that he doesn't learn these bad habits. You got to make him realize, hey, this was a bad season. This was by far and away what is not going to happen most years of your career, hopefully. So we're going to get you some wide receivers. We're going to try to strengthen our team in a way that we can actually have success and you don't have to be, be in just these awful situations. So yeah, that's what I think. I am still a fan of Hertz, although I, I, I think I've gone a little bit down, especially the past couple of weeks of the season. My His stock has fallen, but I say buy some Hertz stock. I think that he could end up still being very good. That's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.